see another knucklehead move that people do on job sites? For Christmas, I'm gonna get you something a little better. The blue, it goes better with your eyes, the blue tape. Shiny girls, shiny necklaces. All right, Ralph, I got a job for you. That looks really good on you, Ralph. So this is just one extra precaution that you can never come back and do again. So, you know, wouldn't you know it, it's empty. It's gotta be flare. Today I'm waiting for the inspector to come out to my house. It's always a little nerve wracking because you gotta make sure they're doing all the HVAC, the heating and air, they're checking the plumbing, they're gonna be going over the electrical, and then the framing, which means I can start closing up my house, get insulation and drywall. So it's a little nerve wracking. It's kind of like going to the principal's office. They come through and they micromanage and check everything out. So hopefully I pass so I can keep moving. But in the meantime, while I'm waiting for the inspector, he's a couple hours out, I came over to Flair's house and you can see Chad the dirt guy's back. There is Flair's pond he's starting to dig out. And the best part is that is some top notch dirt. Top so Flares agreed to have Chad bring truckloads of that over to my house so we can build the garden area. Remember the kids are doing a greenhouse and that's sitting on clay dirt. This is stuff I'm learning. I didn't know I was gonna be a farmer, which I'm not, I'm just helping to finance it. That black dirt will be transported over to my house, creating uh, some great places to start planting and growing crops. And hopefully in time, you guys will be able to buy some stuff from the uh, Happy Harvest Boys. So let's go get a closer look at what Chad's doing and uh, keep an eye on my inspector. I think it should look. I, the front door and the garage right. door is black or white? white one. I don't know. Oh, the exterior door? Yeah. I don't know what that would be. That that would probably be a different. Right. It, it might. Black. It, it says black. Yeah, On, black. Uh, the frame's black. I don't know what color the door is going to be. That's why we, uh, Let me. I'll ask. Let me we'll find out. I was just thinking if it comes down comes down the column. It'll draw too much attention. I think that should be black. Black over here? No, I, I wonder if you go all the way down with black. Because then it will kind of disappear. Otherwise, it's going to stick out on the column. It's white now. And I don't really know if I like it. I think these sides, uno, dos, let's do black. And make it go away. And leave all the other ones white. That's what you're doing, right? I got to find out what the decorator, what they're doing on the front door. Let, let, me, let me call. Okay. I'll, I'll find that out. So we're back at you Flair's. You can come in over here. So you there's... Do. You need me where? Yeah, no, they want me to get up on the roof. I don't, I don't get up on roofs that much unless there's a, a special lift and I'm tied off and, and there's donuts. Are there donuts up there? No. No donuts. I, no donuts, I don't go. Ah, uh, uh, the donuts are at the other house. I'll bring donuts to you so I don't have to go on the roof. I'll bring some to you, all right? Okay. Just don't make me get on the roof. These guys, they, they like to tease me. For these poor painters, which is their, their job, what would drive me crazy is they have to tape all this stuff off. They spend more time taping things off. Check this out. Just so they can get the sprayer out and they're done in about an hour. This is that big stone water table. That's all been protected. See right there? You don't want to get paint on that. So they've covered all this up. They've covered up all the windows. And what's nice about this James Hardy siding, it only takes about one coat because it's already been primed. And this, this stuff will last. I've had homes up to 25 years before they've ever had to paint their house. And even then it's probably not necessary. So it's a great product to use, James Hardy. So we're back at my house. Eugenio was able to rent this uh, big, great big forklift, great all they call it. When they're up on the roof, luckily they were just getting it set up and the hydraulics broke. This thing is leaking hydraulics, not doing very good, but good thing I went and bought my Bobcat because now the Bobcat is being used but does not reach nearly as high as this great all. So we're gonna find out what it's gonna to take to get this fixed. I think we're close enough to being done. The guys he rented it from can come pick it up and Eugenio will be moving on to the next job. So what's interesting, I'm scared of heights. I think my wife is, but up there working with Eugenio is my son, Nate. I don't know if he's scared of heights or not, but you would not catch me up there doing that. Although there's a good sign that he could be scared of heights because uh, his butt cheeks are looking a little bit tight, like he's uh, tensing up. All right, so I was able to get my brand new fireplace in. This is what they call a real wood burning. And the reason for makes it a real wood burning versus what we call a direct vent. Direct vents have all glass on the front and the chimney flue, this right here, is really about eight to 10 inches around. This thing, I wanna say it's close to 15 inches in diameter because when you burn wood in there, you need it to draw, go straight up. A wood burning has to go straight up. A direct vent can go up 
and the word direct vent, you can just directly vent it straight out the back of the house. So this is something that we've gotten away from for some reason. I think it's because of efficiency. These really aren't as efficient, but I like the idea of a house out in the country. We have all this lumber and timber laying around. We can bring it in here and have real wood burning. You still can get a gas log set to it, but again, what makes it wood burning is that there's no glass. It's nice and big. What we had to do when we installed this they had to take the flue, clear up on the outside, and slide it down the chimney chase like Santa Claus. But before we did that, we're ahead of insulation. So I had my insulation guys come in and they insulated the whole backside. Otherwise, they would have never have been able to get to that. So that was a good catch. And we're able to get that done and waiting for our final inspection. Do you wanna see another knucklehead move that people do on job sites? So I'm here, we just got this set, we insulated it. And this bucket right here, this green bucket was sitting down on the ground. So I pull it to try and get it out. I bring it up here and I'm trying to, can't get the damn thing out. So now we gotta bring Eugenio back, which is good because I have to reframe this fireplace because see how high this is? I now can bring this down. It had to be up this big to get it in. I didn't know that at the time anyway, but this can come down so my mantle isn't so far off the ground and I can get the bucket out. So I killed two birds with one stone. All right, it's worth the wait. We've got our Kohler shower pan. And what's nice about this that makes it special from all the other pans is that it's a very low profile, but check this out. This is actually the drain. So everything 45s down to this you don't have this ugly drain to stand on and it looks nice and pretty so this is something new and we're excited to showcase this for us to get our inspections to go to the insulation and then drywall stage there's a term what they call come in and uh, fill all the penetrations so you'll see a guy will come in and every time we drill a hole that goes up through the ceiling we have to foam that to keep the air from penetrating down that's what's making these houses so tight to a point they're almost becoming unhealthy I did put what we call an air exchanger in this house that cleans the air with these better windows and better insulation and we're foaming all the penetrations. There's no fresh air that kind of comes and goes unless you got little kids opening up the front door and running through the house a whole bunch. That is important. And also you'll see we do a step further is that we caulk the seal plate. So where this wood sits down on the floor, it's like a little sandwich. You could get little air penetrations or my wife thinks, and probably true, the bugs the bugs can crawl underneath that. So this is just one extra precaution that you can never come back and do again. So we foam all the little joints in the corners. You can see we foam this corner. We'll get insulation back in here. So we try to go through and get all the little cracks caulked, foamed in. What we're trying to keep this house as efficient as possible. I'm actually even putting in solar panels. So we'll talk about that later that I'm hoping this entire house can run off the grid. So that's what we're working on. So stay tuned for that video. So here's a neat feature that I used to do a long time ago. These are not outlets. We're gonna put little lights in here. So these, there's three of them. So at night, we'll have these accent lights coming up and down the steps on both directions. Something I used to do way back when. So I thought I'd bring them back and start showcasing these and maybe other people will start putting them in their houses again. All right, here's a little tip on when somebody asks you which way your door swings, because it's a left hinge or right hinge, left hinge or right hinge. What you do if you're coming into the room, you put your back against the door where the door is going to hinge. And now we need to figure out which way if it's left or right. So if you swing the door in and your right arm goes in, that's a right hinge. So then what we do is we make these little marks like hinges here. So this is a 3-0 door. That means it's 36 inches wide. And then the RH stands for right hinge. Here's what's confusing. When I said 30, like a 3-0 door, the first number is in feet. So three feet and the O, zero, is zero inches. So if we see another door, we'll come over here. You can see on this one, it says 2-4. That actually is not a 24 inch door. It's a two foot, four inch door. So 24 and four, it's actually 28 inches wide. And another note, when you frame these and you want a 28 inch door, you have to add two inches to every opening so that it fits. So hopefully that makes sense. You can't frame the door the exact same size, the opening as the door. You have to add two inches to the door width. All right, we're in the master on the main floor and this is the shower as you come in. What I do, I lower the ceilings because we have nine foot high ceilings and typically it's kind of nice to drop them down to like eight foot just so all that hot air can actually stay inside the shower. Um, I'm a big fan of shower doors. I don't know if people that have showers, I know there's a lot of people that have them without doors. I always tell them if you want a shower without a door, have never experienced it, you need to leave your door open and take a shower 
and see how well you like it because there's a lot of cold air that comes in. That's just my little tip for you. But here we are in the master. This is, well, trash again. We built a little shower seat. Sometimes we'll run a slab piece of granite, granite or solid surface that actually mounts into the wall. This one here is allows us to put a solid surface on top, tile it here because it's so big. Then we'll have a place so a person can sit down. There's a shower hose right here that a person can shower off for the wife. They can put their leg up, shave the legs, and then we have another shower hit up above. So it's two shower valves doing two different things, and that's what makes these master showers so nice. So if for some reason you want to do your own plumbing, which I don't know I'd advise against, there is a rule of thumb when you lay out toilets. So we have to deal with the floor joists, but this is where the toilet will sit. The rule of thumb is from the center to the wall, you need to have a minimum of 13 inches. If it's less than that, you're gonna find yourself kind of wedged against the wall. It's not comfortable. So that's the minimum, 13. If you can go a little bit bigger, that's nice. And then what you'll want is to have the same where your vanity is. So here's the line showing the vanity. We'll have a sink centered on the wall. What we're also going to have is this wire's hanging loose. We're gonna have some sconces that will come back in later and be able to mount the light fixtures once we get it settled in because every time we think we have them the designer and the homeowner come in they go well that's an inch and a half too low cut out the drywall move it up so hopefully we can just do it once at the end a few times i've put laundry i call them laundry chutes but actually it's a trash chute so laundry chutes are real popular and because this house is up above the garages the garages are directly below us where the trash cans are i like to when i have that opportunity is this is the whole big kitchen wall and right in this area is where I cut a hole in the floor, the trash can will be down below, and where this green board will be a little trash chute that will open up. I can set a throw in the trash down the steps and risking the bag blowing open, like my wife likes to do. She just takes the trash, throws it in the garage, and then my job is to take it to the trash. So maybe I can eliminate my job by having her just throw it down the trash chute. So let's see if that works. Okay, coming upstairs, what I did is put in an upstairs living room. Actually, it's gonna be a media room. I took, I bought that screen from Flair that he thought was not big enough, so we're parking that thing on this wall. My wife does not know that yet. She thinks I, she's not a TV fan. We'll have a media room here. And when you're upstairs, we're literally 30 feet off the ground and we put a big window in. So I'm gonna have the camera spin around and show you the views we have out the back of my house into Flair's backyard. Okay, I brought some donuts to this job site. There's a few left over. So I'm gonna take these to the painters because they're threatening me to get up on the roof with them. And I figured this is a good bribery. I'll have make them come down to get the donuts and then I can make a run for it. Okay, I'm gonna go entice Ricardo and his guys with some donuts. Amigos, you ready for a donut break? All right, Ricardo's the last one. He only, because he's up on the ladder. What do you think? These are good. Thank you. You bet. Hey, you ready for one? Yeah, take the grande. Woo wee. Yeah, there we go. All right, thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Thanks. Sorry, Ricardo, we just ran out. What? Man. Yeah. Sorry, I'll be right back. Here, there's one with the bite taken out of it. No, I got one there, a big grande. Oh, big, big one, that's, what, that's gonna be that, mine. That's, a, look, it's the size of your head. That's huge. Well, oh, you have a little head. Look at that, yeah, nice shiny one. All right, so we have two more. You decide on who gets them. Okay, amigos? Thank you. So we got the door to the garage is white, front door is black. Garage, Blanco, Negro. And that one, that one's white? That one's white, and this big front door, black. See? Okay. All right. All right. Look at look at the bling this guy's wearing. He's got uh, tape for I know for Christmas I'm gonna get you something a little better. The blue it goes better with your eyes. The blue tape. Yeah, because this is not too shiny. No, it no. Is something shiny. I like he like we all like shiny stuff. Shiny girls, shiny <laughs> necklaces. All right. Okay, I'll keep you working by getting out of the way. Adios. All right. I want to show you guys. You think your Gino's making good money? Check out Ricardo's hot rod. He's got a Camaro that he's been driving to the job site.
All right, wouldn't you know it, I get down here, it's 11.25 and they're on lunch break. I wanted to show you guys all the dirt work. This is the start of Flair's Pond. I'll get you a little closer, but check how nice this black, it's pretty close to black dirt. And I know another concern Flair had is the water. There's not a lot of water in these wells, so he needs a well that can pump several hundred gallons a minute. And I think right now, what I was told is he got a whopping 15 gallons a minute. So it's like a garden hose, that's not good. So with this job site and Camel Ralph being so close with the fence right there, I'm gonna make him my job site super. So he'll be keeping an eye on these guys and I'll get a report from him on a regular basis. So we're down in the bottom of the pond. I think they're just getting started, but it's amazing. It does not feel very deep when you're looking down at it, but when you're down inside this thing, I bet we're good 12, 13 foot down underground and there's they just keep digging and digging. So there's a lot of dirt coming out of this thing that they got to put around Flair's house and hopefully some out to my job site as well. So we'll keep you guys posted as they make progress, but they're at lunch right now. Ralph? I got a job for you. I need you to keep an eye on those guys when they're uh, doing their sight work. Can you wear my hat? That looks really good on you, Ralph. Hey, Ralphie, here's some more grass. I'll feed you all the grass you need, but I need my hat back. I'll get you your own, this one's mine. Deal? Thanks, man, I'm counting on you. They've got a Christmas turkey laying on the ground because we came here, I just got here on Monday morning or Sunday, there was a dead chicken that must not have made it in that little door go shut at a certain time. If they don't make it in before it gets dark, they're outside on their own and the little chicken didn't quite make it. It got its head taken off and it just ate the inside. So the chicken didn't make it. So it looks like Flair's setting a trap to see what it is that's killing his chickens. So today's Tuesday and that's Eugenio's egg day, but he's too busy up there side my house. So I'm coming down. I don't have any egg cartons, so I got a beach towel and I'll see if I can bring some eggs back for Eugenio. I think maybe Eugenio might have beat me to the punch. The golf ball always throws me a curveball. That's just a little starter. All right, two eggs. We'll have to come back on Thursday when he, he gets Tuesdays and Thursdays. So I'm pulling into my, uh, my house and I notice there's trash right at the entrance. It's a Coors, I think that's what Flair drinks. He must be throwing trash in my yard. What the hell, what kind of a neighborhood have I moved into? Let me pick up the trash because he throws it in my yard. Yeah, you know, wouldn't you know it? It's empty. It's got to be flare. So I know. Put this back to where, where it belongs. So he's got a trash can. I'll see how close I can get it to his trash. Yeah. There you go, Flair. I threw it back in your yard. All right, guys, so I'm back at Flair's, checking on the painters. I'm gonna wrap things up. It'll be a little more interesting once I get my house and the inspector shows up. I'll be able to take you guys on the next stage drywall, which is not too exciting. I'm impressed with Ralph. I'm gonna see how well he does as one of the job site project managers. He has no excuse not showing up on time because he's always here. So with that, I'm going to leave you guys and I appreciate you watching. Please comment and buy some Brad the Builder stuff and uh, I'll see you guys on the next job site. Okay, I just got off the phone with uh, Kyle, who's doing all the remodel workforce down in Houston, Texas, where Colin Doyle is. He is currently still in the hospital. He's on week six of an eight week stay. So we have a huge push to getting his home done. We're just down to a few things. We're waiting on some master, the shower tile coming in for the flooring. And Colin is getting a little taste of what it's like to build a house or do some remodeling because things don't always go as planned. Kyle's doing a tremendous job staying ahead of the schedule. I hope to be down there when Colin gets out of the hospital to review this bathroom that you guys have all helped support. By the way, we're still about $3,500 short of our goal. So if you could click the link below, I would greatly appreciate it. Colin is tickled to death and it cannot wait to get home to see what you guys have done for him. So thank you so much and I appreciate it.